Hello everyone, this is Adam Vig and you are watching Adam's Perspective on Data. Have you ever tried to create a Gantt chart for your project uh, in Power BI? Actually, I was very much suffering with that uh, in the past. The only way how I could get that is uh, with custom visuals. Now I will introduce you a method, uh, a method how you can create a great and nice looking Gantt chart like this with using only native visualization in Power BI. We will use actually a cluster bar chart uh, for our purpose, and then we will do a lot of different uh, formatting uh, with the options of Power BI. But let's start with meeting the data first. So let's get uh, head over to uh, Power BI and see that what we are working with. The data set for this uh, purpose is pretty easy. You can see here that we only have one table, and that is the projects with 10 different projects, and showing the project name, the start date of the project, the end date, and the status of the project. Now we need to set up some basic formulas uh, uh, for the projects and we need to uh, create integer values uh, of the dates uh, because the visualization needs integers and not date values. Uh, we will set up uh, a start, a project start, a project end. Also we will set up a project duration in days and, uh, and uh, a midday that is uh, uh, the day in the middle of the project. After that, we put together the base visualization. So I'm pulling the projects uh, onto the canvas and I will use a clustered bar chart uh, for this visual. Let me resize it. And I will use first the mid date uh, to be shown. Uh, you can see here that the mid date looks very similar here. So I will create uh, another um, measure that is calculating the absolute minimum value uh, of my date range. So it will be the absolute uh, start date that will be calculate the minimum start date for all selected projects. And what I can do that in the x-axis minimum, I can set this absolute start date. Okay, yes, it's not good yet. I need to also convert it to integer. Let's try now. And it's good. And I can sort it by the project in date. Actually, that will not be good for uh, us because it's not necessarily uh, the uh, the right order. But we will need the project start date. I'm adding it to the tooltips, and if I'm adding it to the tooltips, I can use it for sorting. So project start date and put it in ascending. Uh, and here you can see uh, how the projects uh, are starting. After that, I will make the bars invisible absolutely transparent and what I will utilize are, uh, are the error bars moving forward. And here we have the uh, bars now. Uh, we are ready with that. Maybe uh, we are also removing the grid lines because that's uh, using and uh, also I will remove all the x and the y axis values because those are also a bit confusing for us we don't need them so the only thing that we need on the canvas are the bars also not uh, the titles and here uh, now we are ready with the bars and Cool, now we have the Gantt bars. So the next step is to add uh, the details uh, above uh, the bars to see that uh, what is the project, what is the start date and what is the duration for that. Let's add a couple of those measures that will be necessary for the labels. That will be the project title, the project details, and uh, another one that is the color by status with which we will dynamically color uh, the data labels.
So now we need to set up the labels. So I will turn on the data labels, but I wouldn't, will not need the data labels for the mid date, neither for the end date. I will set up all the labels for the project start date. I'm using start date because this is the best place uh, for our labels uh, about the start of the, uh, the projects. And I will use the outside end. Uh, first of all, I will set up the background for this, I will use the white and I will use uh, the 50% uh, transparency. So the value uh, should not be the uh, project start date, I, I won't need it, uh, but I will need the project title uh, for that. That's showing project one done or project seven in progress. Uh, the color is uh, uh, dynamic, so I, I click on the dynamic formatting, I'm using the field value, and I will choose the color by status that we created uh, previously. So here you can see that it's coloring uh, in the right progress. Maybe we can do it uh, bold. After that, we can set up the details, and for the details, we will need the project details uh, here. And for that, we will also use the color by, by status. So here it is. And the last thing that the layout should be multi-line instead of the single line. So here you can see that this is putting uh, the right labels uh, above the, the charts. So the other thing that we can do uh, with the bars or the start date, no, for all the bars, sorry, that in the layout, uh, we can uh, turn off the spacing. So with that, it, it gives a little bit uh, better position uh, for our labels. We can make it a little bit bigger. And here we have uh, all the details uh, uh, for our grant bars. The last step is to add the uh, today's date. Uh, now uh, I won't uh, add the actual today's date, uh, but uh, a dummy today's date. So it will be today again as integer because I have to place it as an integer. So I will convert and uh, let's add the date. Uh, I will use uh, February the, let's say the 16th and an integer value for this and uh, I can set up a reference line that will be a constant line. I will call it today and the value will be the today as integer. Here you can see it's putting it here very well. Uh, I can change the color to, the, to a different one or maybe uh, this one. And I also can add the data label. Uh, left above is good. Uh, I won't need the data value, but the data name that is showing that today is here, changing the color and everything is done. So, And we are now ready with this nice gun chart that you can show to your users. I hope you liked it. And uh, if so, uh, please follow me on my YouTube channel and also on my website, theadamsperspectiveondata.com. Thanks for watching. Cheers.